Traditional ventilation systems simply extract indoor air and bring in fresh air from the outside, but this process can waste the energy used to heat or cool the indoor air. And heat recovery provides a solution by ensuring a continuous flow of fresh air without the associated energy loss. And even though HRV systems have many benefits, there can be major drawbacks from problems with comfort to high investment costs. However, this can be avoided when these systems are designed properly. My name is Anton Dobrevsky, I'm a past health trainer and for over five years I've been involved in the design and realization of dozens of HRV systems. So I'll share my experience with you about how HRV systems work and how they should be designed so that you can get the most out of them. At its most basic, heat recovery ventilation, or shortly HRV, is a type of balanced ventilation system, meaning that it's extracting the stale air from the building while providing fresh filtered air 24 seven. And the goal of an HRV system is to reclaim or recover as much heat as possible from the outgoing stale air and transfer it to the incoming fresh air. And this is possible thanks to the so-called heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is placed in the central air handling unit and it is designed to enable this thermal exchange. As the stale warmed indoor air moves out, it goes through channels that are adjacent to the channels carrying the fresh, cooler outdoor air that is going into the building. And the walls of these channels are excellent conductors of heat, which allows the warm indoor air to transfer, or in other words, to give off its heat to the cooler incoming air while preventing the mixing of both air streams. So this process is not only energy efficient, but also sustainable, resulting in reduced energy bills and a lower carbon footprint. And the beauty of this design is that it captures the energy that would otherwise be lost, leading to substantial energy savings. And while the principle remains the same, there are different designs of heat exchangers, which will lead to different results. So be careful with the unit that you choose and what type of heat exchanger it has. Firstly, we have counter flow exchangers, where the two air streams flow in opposite opposite directions, allowing for maximum heat exchange efficiency. And these can reach heat recovery efficiencies up to 93%. There are also cross-flow exchangers in which the two air streams flow perpendicular to each other. And compared to the counter-flow exchangers, the cross-flow ones have lower efficiencies because there is much less area through which the outgoing air can give off the heat to the incoming one. Lastly, we have rotary or wheel exchangers. This involves a rotating wheel-like structure that absorbs heat from the outgoing air and then releases it to warm the incoming air. And these have the lowest efficiencies and they are not recommended for residential projects. The benefit of choosing a better heat exchanger like a counterflow one instead of a crossflow or rotary wheel is on one side the higher efficiency and the saved energy costs, but on the other side the comfort. Because the lower the efficiency of the unit is, the colder the supply air will be. And if you have a unit with an efficiency of 60%, then you will be dumping cold air, there will be cold drafts inside, and this will be causing a lot of discomfort. And we've even had customers who came to us and told us, please help me, my wife is complaining that the fresh air from the ventilation system is too cold. So how can we fix this? And well, they wouldn't have had these issues if they chose a high quality unit with high heat recovery rate and the good heat exchanger from the very beginning. Another very important thing to consider is whether you need an HRV or ERV unit. So both aim to optimize ventilation while conserving energy. However, ERV or energy recovery ventilation goes a step further. While HRV focuses solely on heat recovery, ERV also balances humidity levels by transferring moisture. And remember that too low humidity levels can lead to many respiratory diseases and too high humidity levels can lead to mold growth, which again is very dangerous for our health. So we should take into account the fact that the ventilation system is directly related to the relative humidity inside the building and therefore we should choose the proper unit. And ERV units are especially valuable in two specific cases, ensuring not just a comfortable temperature but also optimal humidity. So on one side in cold climates, because in these climates the outside air has very low moisture content and without an ERV system will have very low relative humidity levels indoors. On the other side, ERVs are very useful in hot and humid climates because the outside humidity is very high and ERVs keep the higher moisture content outside and avoid reaching too high humidity levels inside. Beyond the heat exchanger, which acts as the heart of the system, 
A Nature V ventilation system comprises several other critical components that ensure its smooth and efficient operation. So another main component of our HRV system are the ducts, which are like the veins of the system. They create a network that channels fresh and stale air in their respective directions and we differentiate between four main types of ducts. Firstly, we have the outside air intake ducts that draw in fresh air from the outside into the HRV unit. The air goes through the unit and then is distributed along the building via the supply ducts. They sort of guide the fresh air from the HRV unit into the different rooms. And then the stale air is extracted from kitchens and bathrooms and via the extract air ducts goes back into the unit so that it can transfer its heat and moisture in case of ERVs to the incoming air from the outside. After the air passes through the unit and the heat exchanger, it goes via the exhaust air ducts again to the outside. And there are two things you have to be very careful with. Firstly, the ducts between the thermal envelope and the air handling unit have to be well insulated because otherwise there will be major heat losses through those ducts. And secondly, in colder climates, it is important to consider having a preheater. Basically, before the fresh air enters the heat exchanger, a preheater gently warms it up, preventing freezing or frost buildup within the system. Another essential component of the ventilation system are the silencers. On one side, we use silencers to reduce any noise generated by the airflow of the fans. And for the sake of comfort, we don't want to hear our heat recovery ventilation. We just want to feel its benefits. And another type of silencers are the so-called cross-talk silencers. So when a single duct is connected to two rooms, a silencer should be placed between both rooms because otherwise people in one room will hear what's happening in the other room. And in some cases, we really want to avoid it. Like you wouldn't want the children to be able to hear what's happening in the parent's bedroom, right? So to avoid this, we put silencers. And clean air is as important as fresh air. Therefore, filters play a vital role in ensuring the air circulated by the HRV system is free from pollutants, allergens, and particles. And there are filters located at the unit that treat the incoming fresh air, removing larger particles and contaminants. And in this way, they filter the air while protecting the unit and ensure its proper operation. Additionally, we should place filters at the extract air valves. That's to protect the ducts from the air that is being extracted from the spaces. And in this way, we will protect the ducts and less maintenance will be needed. So I hope that now you have a much clearer understanding about the different components of the ventilation system. However, designing an effective heat recovery ventilation system isn't merely about piecing together the different components. It requires a deep understanding of the principles that govern optimal airflow and heat recovery. And therefore, it's critical to get the airflow rates just right. Why? If you have too high a capacity, you're not only overpaying for a unit that's sort of overqualified for your space, but you might also end up with unnecessarily high energy bills due to the overventilation and even too dry air in the winter. On the other side, too low a capacity and the system will struggle to provide sufficient fresh air, compromising the indoor air quality and comfort. And to further minimize the investment costs, save a lot on ducts and avoid oversizing the system, the cross ventilation principle should be used. Fundamentally, it's about allowing fresh air to flow naturally through a building. And instead of supplying and extracting air from the same rooms, we divide the building into different zones. So in the living areas like dining room, bedrooms, etc., we supply air. Then this air is being transferred via the transfer air zones, for example, the corridors. And then it goes into the extract air zones, which are the areas with higher amounts of moisture, odors and contaminants like the kitchen, bathrooms, laundry room, etc and is being extracted from there. So by combining the cross ventilation principle with carefully dimensioning the airflow rates, one can ensure the system runs optimally, providing fresh air, saving energy and ensuring the comfort of the inhabitants without having to overpay for the system. But no matter how well the ventilation system is designed, if the building is not airtight, the balanced ventilation system will not be able to work properly and it will be more expensive to run the system. Therefore, air tightness is one of the main prerequisites for having a heat recovery ventilation system. And to learn how to make your building airtight, check out this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.